Hey everyone, I'm Elle, and in this video we're going to be talking about another aspect of using Git for data science, and that's when we have a Git project, um, and we might be using DVC to associate some models or data sets with the Git project and keep them out in, in storage. Um, you know, what if you want to take those artifacts, those data sets and models, and reuse them in new contexts. So for example, you might have a production environment and you just wanna pull a model out of your project and you don't need any Git versioning there, you just need to get the model. You don't wanna like clone the project, you just want the model. Or maybe you have a Jupyter notebook and you just wanna pull a data set and grab that and be ready to work with it. Or maybe you want to collaborate easily um, and share your projects with people. And that includes not just the code, but data and models. So we're going to cover a couple ways here to access files that are part of a DVC track project. So now I'm going to show you how you can use DVC to identify all of the DVC tracked files that are in a project. Um, so for example, if somebody has a project on GitHub and you know that there are some DVC tracked files associated with it, how would you find out what those files are. Um, and the function is called DVC list. And um, it actually works on your GitHub repository, the, whatever repository you're interested in, it's gonna list all the artifacts associated with that um, because your GitHub repository or just any Git repository in the project is kind of your you know, central record of truth. Um, so that's the same in DVC. So what we'll do is this function DVC list, and then you will add the address to your Git repository here. It's um, our data set registry that we're hosting. And then you can add a file path if you'd like to go into a particular file. So I'm gonna say, look in the get started folder. You'll run this and then it's going to give us a list and it's going to tell us that there's a git ignore, a data.xml, and a data.xml.dvc file. And indeed, let's go look at um, this, this repository. We go in the get started folder and we have two of those files. We have the DVC and the git ignore file. So it's telling us everything here and that includes the data.xml file, which is actually in cloud storage, and this .dvc file is pointing towards it. So that's how you can list all of the DVC tracked files associated with your project. All right, what if you actually want to get a file? What if I say, well, now I wanna have data.xml or something else that's in a similar kind of storage. Um, so I'm gonna show you a couple tricks for getting it. And the first one is called DVC get. So I'm gonna run DVC get, and I'm going to put in the address, um, and you can actually copy and paste the commands from, our, um, from our, our docs file here. We're on the data access page, and you can copy it. Um, so actually, actually I'll just do that for simplicity. All right, and it's going to download a copy. So DVC get is, um, it's kind of like a wrapper on a function like wget or curl, um, except it's going to handle all of the, you know, assembling where do we download from. Um, so it's nice, it's high level, and it'll get you a copy of an object that is DVC tracked and in cloud storage and wait for this job to run. And once it's done, um, then we'll have this folder and we have all the data. So it's doing pretty good. Let's take a look at a dog. Aw, these are great dogs. Okay, I'm gonna show you another trick and it's called DVC import. So one downside of using DVC get is that if I come back to this folder in a week, I may not remember where I got it from. Um, I may have absolutely no idea where I downloaded it from, and sometimes that's fine, but sometimes it's not, and you really can't live with that degree of uncertainty or, you know, having to write it down somewhere and remember. You want to be more automatic and rigorous about identifying and maintaining a record of where you got this from, and that's what DVC import is for. So you can run DVC import, and then um, you can add an address, and... Let's do github.com. Okay, and for this one, we're gonna do get started data.xml and we're gonna print that the output should be this data.xml file. Um, 
All right, it's going to be downloading and it'll ask us, you know, okay, if you want to, you know, track these changes, we suggest to get commit, it's up to you. And the reason why you might want to get commit is that you got a new file. Um, let's see. Here we go. We got this new digiter.xml.dvc file. Um, and this contains a hash for which version of the file we downloaded. And it also contains the URL for where we got it from, as well as some other important versioning info. Um, and that will let us basically always check, you know, where did we get it from? And another cool thing that you can do when you have this import file is that anytime you want, you can check if there's a newer version of that file available on the GitHub project. Um, so you can do DVC update. And it's going to check and didn't change, so it won't download anything. But when you run this DVC update file, um, if there has been a, a newer version, then it'll download it for you. All right, and the last thing I'm going to show you is an approach using our Python API. So I'm going to create a new, new script here just for show. And the way that this will work is with import dvc.api. Um, so in order to do an import dvc.api, you'll want to have done a pip install of dvc so that you can use the Python API. And what we'll do is with dvc.api.open, um, and then let's do get started data.xml. So then we're going to add a path to our data set of interest. Um, and then what I'm going to do is set the repo And then we'll do, and then here you can then have, you know, some a regular file descriptor in Python. Um, and you can use this however you want. You could do something like FD read. Um, it's just a file descriptor. It behaves like any other. Um, so you can use this approach to skip downloading something into your, you know, via command line into your workspace permanently and only load you know, this, this artifact, this data set or this model, um, when you run the Python script. So it will be loaded into the workspace um, when this script is running. Um, and then it will cease to exist on your machine after this process is over, unless you save it. Um, so this can be especially good for loading, say, a, a model that you have trained and saved, you know, somewhere in cloud storage. Um, this is a good way to load it into um, your Python project and work on it um, without having to necessarily keep it in your in your workspace. All right, we've covered three ways to access data sets and models that are being DVC tracked. We've got DVC get, DVC import, and the DVC Python API. So all cool ways to get started taking artifacts um, out of projects and using them in new contexts. Um, I haven't showed you everything that you can do with them. Um, you can grab previous revisions, so older versions um, of, a, of a file, as well as versions that might be on other branches of a project. All of that is possible with these functions. So check out the docs for a deeper dive. Um, and in our next DVC Basics video, we're going to be getting started with pipelines. So how to chain together steps um, of all the processes that it takes to create a data set or a model. All right, stay tuned and catch us soon.